I was employed, had a job, did really well. What did you do? I was a truck driver, a laborer. I came up here to be caretaker for a woman who died. The family never came and visited or anything else. And the day after the funeral, they came in and booted me out and cleaned me out. I had her a relatively very good life. I worked in the oil field. I've been in the oil field for the last 10 years. What happened? I was ran over by a vehicle December 20th of 06 while I was crossing the street. And it basically left me crippled for the rest of my life. When you have a good job and security and stability, you, you, you tend to think emotionally that you're doing good. And then as I got older, I had some health issues. And the health issues uh, made work decline from full-time to part-time. And uh, the lack of the ability to, to do things on my own and to be self-supportive uh, led to emotional disabilities, regret, doubt, self-esteem. Um, the list is endless, really. Being called a prostitute, sexually harassed, beat up, um, taken advantage of, um, and not basically being alone is just scary. So I pretty much lived in a tent up in the mountains the whole time just to keep from dealing with the harassment on the city. I never mm -hmm. had to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. I always had the vehicles I wanted, the motorcycles I wanted. Everything was right there. If I wanted it, I got it. Mm -hmm. And to lose everything you have and not know where your next meal's coming from or where you're going to lay your head that night, it's a big change. The point of this is that poverty is really dehumanizing. And in our society, homelessness is the ultimate expression of poverty. In our culture, there's an assumption about the deserving and undeserving poor. And if you are helping the deserving poor, then it's okay. But there's an assumption that homelessness comes because people are undeserving, that they are alcoholics, that they are defective in some way, that they have made bad choices. And there's not a recognition of a lot of the other factors that go into homelessness. At the Carriage House, what we wanna do is help welcome people in, help welcome the homeless and working poor in an atmosphere that recognizes their humanity and gives them skills and resources to achieve the goals that they have chosen for themselves. The Carriage House has been uh, extremely helpful. It's, it's helped me recover, bounce back. It's helped me with uh, programs I never really knew existed, uh, like government agencies, mental health agencies, uh, just the support here, food, clean shower, just to have someone to talk to when you're feeling in a crisis, that you come in feeling all beat up, but when you get, when someone sits down and listens to you for five or ten minutes, you feel like you've taken a couple of bricks out of that bag and it doesn't feel as heavy and as weighing. Well, they've helped me get in transitional housing. They've helped me get hooked up with the Center of People with Disabilities, my medication that I need for uh, People's Clinic, Department of Vocational Rehab, because I want to go back to work mm -hmm. at some point, even if it's minimal. Mm -hmm. And they just help guide me and make, make it not so tough being homeless, plus a safe place to go. When I first came here, I wasn't able to get any type of medical attention due to the lack of insurance. Carriage House got me connected with People's Clinic and other outreach programs. They helped me schedule my MRIs. They helped me get in touch with agencies to help me with my medication. They've been there for me and helped me with transportation to my medical appointments. I just realized that there are a lot of people in need. There's always going to be a lot of people in need. And there always holds that little bit of hope. There's always hope that it's going to get better. And through the Carriage House, they offer the support systems if you're just willing to walk through that door. I'm getting the help that I need to, to better my life through this, this program.